It's a great honor to be here tonight uh, to speak a few words about Jeffrey. Um, we come from, Jeffrey and I come from Australia. I don't know how many Australians are in the audience tonight. Um, but it's, it's a small country comparative, comparative to many other countries, only 25 million of us. Um, we, we're a country made up of the oldest continuous culture in the world. The indigenous culture of Australia is over 50,000 years, making it the longest culture, uninterrupted culture in the world. And we are one of the youngest cultures in the world. Um, but we are an island entirely made up of immigrants. So we are unique in the world. 25 million people that came from somewhere else. Every one of Australia's, thank you, everyone, Everyone's a Mischling, everyone's a bastard, everyone's a mutant, everyone comes from somewhere else, and somehow the country works. 25 million people, of course, it's then a small artistic community, so everyone knows everyone. All the film people know the theatre people, I'm a theatre and opera person, but everyone knows each other. We're not really a nationalistic country. Unlike other countries, we don't really weep over our flag unless it's after the First or Second World Wars but we don't actually carry a great nationalistic gene in our body, which I think is very, very good. What we do carry is enormous pride when other Australians succeed. It's something that I think small countries are very good at, much, bigger than, much better than larger countries. But Australia particularly is a country that has enormous pride whenever a tennis player or a football player or a, um, a film star or an actor, or a director, or an author, or a painter, or a, or a film director, has enormous success. It's sort of a success for the whole country. And of course, Jeffrey is one of the flag-bearing members of this sort of national pride that we have. Um, I met Jeffrey nearly 30 years ago. In fact, we were sort of sharing um, a sleeping quarters of a very good friend of ours in Sydney. He was um, just finishing a season at Belvoir Street Theatre, and I was just starting to direct a show there. This was before Jeffrey had his huge international success. So I've, I, I've, I've seen Jeffrey come and go through all sorts of different things. But I think the most important thing to say is that you know him basically as a film star. You know him as an extraordinary film actor. But of course, he started, like most fantastic film uh, actors, on the stage, still returns to the stage. In fact, I think the stage is his home. I think film is a land that he likes to go with a visa and then come back on the stage. I'm sure he would agree with me there that he enjoys traveling into the land of film with his passport. But in fact, the theater and the stage is his home. But of course, it has enabled him to do extraordinary work over the last few years. You, of course, know him from many, many, many great films. This is what I'm just going to have to refer to my notes. Normally, I'm sensational without notes, but there's a long list of films. Of course, you've seen him shine. You've seen him in Shakespeare in Love. You've seen him in Quills. You've seen him in The King's Speech. You've seen him extraordinary performance in The Life and Death of Peter Sellers. You've, of course, seen him in The Pirates of the Caribbean. And he's now filming a series about Albert Einstein, hence the hairdo that he's wearing <laughs> there. In the Berlinale, this is his 10th uh, appearance at the Berlinale uh, tonight for this film. Applause, I think. That's a, a great uh, record there. He first came, of course, to play in Shakespeare. He was at first here in Shakespeare in Love, then he did Quills, then he was here for The Tale of Panama, then he was here for Candy, then he was here for Brand New Day, then he was here, a super Australian film, then he was here for Shine, another great Australian film, The King's Speech, produced by Australians, and <laughs> The Best Offer and Oscar Wilde's The Nightingale and The Rose. So these are nine films tonight, makes his 10th appearance here to receive this fantastic award. He is, belongs to a very, very, very rare group of people. In fact, it's a tiny, tiny list of people that have won three awards uh, for one, uh, three, only three, uh, for these three awards. He's won the Academy Award, he's won the Emmy Award, and he's won the Tony Award for his performances on Broadway. That's a very small group of people that have this triple threat award. And Jeffrey, of course, has done that. And I believe he was the first actor to win an Academy Award, a BAFTA Award, a Critics 
Movie Choice Award, a Golden Globe Award, and a Screen Actors Guild Award for his extraordinary performance in Shine. And he was the first actor to win all of these awards for one role. So, <laughs> quite extraordinary. Anyway, enough of the lists. What, what is it about Jeffrey? I've always thought Jeffrey is like an anorexic Zero Mostel. That's like Zero Mostel on a diet. Maybe people don't know who Zero Mostel is, but Jeffrey knows. Um, and that, that to me is the most important thing. Jeffrey is an extraordinary actor, but he's a clown. He's a clown from top to bottom. And I mean clown in the best tradition of that word and of that style of performing. He actually even studied at the Lecoq School in Paris when he was very young. And by clown, I don't mean red nose and terrible party routines. I don't mean that. I mean someone that understands that great roles or great performing is about making people laugh and cry simultaneously. Not saying this is my laughing mode and this is my sad, uh, this is my sad mode and this is my funny mode. It's not about that. It's about simultaneously making people experience these two emotions and everything in between these emotions. And Jeffrey has, it's these five, has five qualities that I think any great actor has to, has to have. He has extraordinary technique. Technique is craft, you know? Fortunately, we live in a world where everyone thinks they can do everything. Some people can do it very easily, but acting is a craft. It takes skill, it takes virtuosity, it takes technical, especially in the theater when he was starting. Jeffrey's use of his body is an instrument. He uses his body and his voice like a violinist or like a great pianist would use an instrument. He uses his body and his voice. That is his instrument. And this instrument can play extraordinary music, extraordinary different types of music too. Jazz music, classical music, rock music, anything. He can play anything on this instrument because his technique is so extraordinary. The second thing he has is fantasy and imagination. Look at the list of films, extraordinary. You don't know most of his theater work. He did amazing and still does amazing. I have lived in Australia for 17 years, so I haven't seen him on stage for 17 years, but he gave an extraordinary performance in Australia that was quite, quite, quite uh, stood as one of the great, I think, performances in Australian theater when he took on board The Diary of a Madman, an adaptation of Gogol's short story. He had no hair for that performance. But you, unfortunately, haven't seen those extraordinary theatre performances. What you've seen, I think, are the resonances and the echoes of these performances. Because like every great actor, Jeffrey takes every single role with him into the next role, and the role after that, and the role after that. So every performance is a summation of what was before and what he's doing at the moment. The third thing that Jeffrey has is extraordinary, I would say, uh, Uneitelkeit, he's not vain. You know, he leaves the vanity in the garden gorber. It's just put there. He can play ugly. In fact, I think he loves playing ugly. He can play charming. He can play mean. He can play terrible, terrible, terrible. He can play gorgeous. He can play sexy. He can play anything. But this unbelievable belief in that vanity must be left aside. Nothing artistic can involve vanity at all. It has nothing to do with it. It's a very special quality, I think, in only the great actors. The fourth thing is that Jeffrey's a team player. He comes from theatre, so he understands how important the mishpucha is when you create art, that you don't do it alone, that you do not do it alone, that you create your work with people. He collaborates with directors. He loves, he's hysterical in a garden, in a, in a, in a dressing room. He's naughty in a dressing room. He's naughty with his colleagues. He's generous with his colleagues. This means that he understands that this is not about one person. It's not about narcissism. Even though people would like to think, especially in film, that what you all do is narcissistic, I think a small part of you do do that, but I can say that as an opera director, but the great actors are not narcissists at all. They may have complicated egos, but they can't be a great actor and be narcissistic. I think it's impossible. And the last thing that I think that Jeffrey has, which I think is the most important quality of any great actor, is mystery. Who is Jeffrey Rush? I know a few versions of Jeffrey Rush or a few parts of him, but like all great actors, he's a sphinx. And I don't think we want to know what the sphinx thinks all the time. Well, there was a rhyme there, the sphinx thinks. I don't think we want to know 
what that is. I think it's very important that mystery is an important part of great acting. And in Jeffrey and his theatre work and in all these films that I've named has shown us that mystery, what bubbles underneath the surface is great acting, not is what is presented. Acting is not presentation. Acting is about what the soul speaks and sings to us. And through Jeffrey's instrument, which I referred to before, he lets us have glimpses of his soul, but not the whole thing. So I think these five things, as my five commandments for what every actor should have. Unfortunately, most actors don't have that, but Jeffrey belongs to a small group like his awards of actors that do have that. And the other great quality about Jeffrey is he's a dag. I think only the Australians in the audience will understand what a dag is. Um, it's a very particular Australian word. It actually comes from the back end of a sheep, the dirty part of the sheep. Um, in the 19th century, they called it a dag. But in Australia, there's a few Aussies there, yeah. But it means a dag is someone who is actually idiosyncratic, but friendly, but relaxed, but special, but like is not full of himself and is not, it's, it's basically our 25 million dags. It's actually our Australian characteristic. You Germans have other characteristics. We have the characteristic of being a dag. <laughs> Kate Blanchett is a dag. She's a beautiful, she's one of the world's most beautiful dags. Hugh Jackman is one of the world's most talented, tap-dancing, handsome dags. But Jeffrey is king of the dags. <laughs> and, and, and for me, Jeffrey combines two important ingredients. He is the dag, and he is also completely tapped into the powers of our god, Dionysus. Uh, he's our creative god. We are all under his influence. I think, I don't know what the, I, think, I presume Dionysus, he's the theatre god, but I presume he also works for film too. But we are all in Dionysus' arms. And for me, Jeffrey is a Dionysian dag. And for me, that makes him a very, very special performer. It's a great honour to be able to be here to present this Nadashio. I'm now finishing so you can all see the film. But it makes me a proud, as an Australian, makes me proud as an artist, that Jeffrey continues to do such extraordinary work and that he is so idiosyncratic and there is only one Jeffrey Rush and there will only ever be one Jeffrey Rush. So Jeffrey, congratulations and thank you very much. Good night. And here comes the laureate who has charmed the Berlinale audience several times. Please welcome Dieter Koslik and Jeffrey Rush. I think all is set. But not from everybody, what we say in Germany. So the only, we have also a motivation, of course, everything is, is right, what Barry said, but we have a motivation to give you this Berlinale camera as the last award you don't have. Because uh, Berlinale camera, camera is actually underrated. <laughs> but not anymore now. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Jeffrey. Thank you. Thank you. I taught Barry Kosky how to speak German. Uh, but I'm going to uh, tell you a little story in English. In 1896, the Lumiere brothers visited Australia from France, probably without visas, but they were most welcome. And they brought their kinematograph, which ignited a burst of filmmaking creativity in our far-flung country. And within a few years, we had the honor, the pluck, the spirit to make the world's first feature-length film about an outlaw. A hundred years later, through periods of boom and bust, this somehow maybe sort of allowed me the privilege in my middle age to perform in my first feature film. Also in the 19th century, my paternal great-great-grandfather from Ireland came to Australia to serve his sentence in our country's penal colony. He had the privilege of being a convict. On my mother's side, I always thought I was descended from migrant German fathers. Farmers, sorry. <laughs> Just the one. Um, but two years ago, I appeared in the genealogical research TV program, Who Do You Think You Are? In Germany, you may be familiar with this franchise as Das Geheimnis meiner Familie. 
But in English, the title, Who Do You Think You Are?, is a question that for an actor can possibly throw you into an alarming and disturbing existential spiral. <laughs> or perhaps be a serious rebuff but sensible challenge to your vanity. Who do you think you are? From this program, I discovered the unknown extent of my mother's ancestry, past lives across nine generations to the 17th century. My great, 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 great grandfather from a small town north of Hamburg was in fact not a farmer, but an accomplished instrumentalist who worked as a court musician for a Danish count. But he really wanted to be a Spielmann in his own hometown of Wilster. However, he was denied this opportunity because of regional jealousies and rivalries. And for his whole lifetime, he wrote to the king seeking a royal privilege that would honor his musicianship and allow him to practice his art. Eventually, his son was anointed with this prestigious regional communal job, and for the next five generations, their descendants became Spielmann, from the glorious era of Bach and Telemann and Pachelbel onwards. I am inspired by this simple family story. For me, it is a great privilege to work as an actor, a job in which we tell the stories playfully, abrasively, absurdly, confrontationally, everything that I think a festival like the Berlinale presents. The stories about who we all are in the epoch of our living. I'm very honored to have been offered this rare privilege tonight in Germany. I thank Herr Dieter Koslik and his team and also my laudator. It's not a word we throw around in English that often. <laughs> and my fellow, com fellow countrymen who somehow, with irre irrepressible chutzpah, presides over your komische opera. I will use this object just for a moment. We, we, we go here. I'd, like, I'd like to take ein selfie. <laughs> I want I want you all to move in. Come in. That's it. Right. We got it. Thank you.